Okay, welcome to the channel. Uh, thanks for stopping by. My name is Victor, and I'm going to be anchor for this uh, presentation. Okay, uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you're an existing subscriber, thanks for always coming back to learn about tech, about business, about what is going to help you better your career. Now, I'm going to be looking at cybersecurity rules. So, Cybersecurity is about you protecting your IT infrastructure. You want to protect your web servers. You want to protect your mobile apps. You want to protect your digital assets, either intellectual property, whatever you want to protect. You want to protect your website. You want to protect your hardware. That's what cybersecurity is about. Now, to be a cybersecurity professional, there are several certifications you could take. There are several skill sets you can develop. But now, here's a challenge. There are several persons that are interested in cybersecurity, but might not have the core technical skills, like in web programming, in um, mobile app development, in, um, let's say, for instance, in networking, in all of those feeder rules. In the previous video uh, in the channel, I explained some of different career rules you have in cybersecurity. But before you could get into cybersecurity, you will need to have some of these foundation uh, uh, based core skills, right? Because to protect a website, for instance, it then means you should be able to set up one. Especially if your role is going to involve you also creating patches and fixing all of that. If you need to protect the network, for instance, you need to know what how a network is being laid out, the architecture of the network and the rest, so that you can able to, even if you're going to run any tool or any software, the kind of results you're going to get, you want to be able to be able to, you want to be able to interpret those results. But that aside, so, but now I want to talk about what are those kind of rules that I can get started with, even if I don't have core tech, core IT background. So I'm going to look at 10 of those non-technical rules and how you could get started with them. And what are those kind of soft skills that you need to get started. So there are about 10 of them. I'm going to explain each and every one of them. So the very first role is security awareness and culture engineer. Now in cybersecurity, uh, because there's what we call social engineering. So social engineering have to do with that aspect, uh, exploiting the aspect of the human uh, personality. No, everybody, we want to help. We want to be of assistance. We want to, uh, kind of um, uh, be seen as a good person, a, a person that will help change, a person that will help you maybe fix something. So hackers can actually exploit that seemingly um, high vulnerability we have in humans because a lot of the cyber breaches we have are caused by human error, error. Yes, you can have the best of machines, you can have the best of servers, you can have the best of softwares. Just for instance, in, in, in 2020, during the pandemic, Twitter was hacked. The inroad to that hack was just the, I think the support um, decks or support specialists or support, somebody working in Twitter, that person was exploited through social engineering. So that's why we had the attack. So the job of a security awareness or culture engineer is to create security awareness. Now, you need roughly few days, few hours of knowledge to be able to even take up these roles. In one of the videos on the channel, I explained how, uh, what kind of rules that you can like kind of get up, get on with, if you're just starting up in cyber security. Now, but here we're talking about the security awareness and culture engineer. So he is or she is going to be responsible for telling people about uh, the do's and don'ts of the internet, the do's and don'ts of cyber crime, trying to interpret the security policy of the organization and telling the staff member how to make sure that they don't fall for most of these uh, cyber breaches. So he's going to be responsible for improving on security awareness. He's going to be responsible for any programs that have been created by the top tier security experts within organization. How does he get everybody within the company to understand this, right? So this person is also going to be interested 
are responsible for identifying and responding to social engineering risks within the organization. Are you there? So that is what the job of a security awareness and culture engineer is. The next person is a policy writer. So who is a policy writer? Now, you need to understand that there are several cybersecurity frameworks. You have the NIST framework. You have uh, some laws like the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. You have the PCI standard. You have the ISO uh, standard. You have several uh, kind of policy documents, frameworks, guidelines, principles, procedures that an organization should follow. So who is going to be responsible for composing a clear, accurate and coherent documentation, right? It's going to be that policy writer. So as a policy writer, you'll be responsible for writing information security policy to guide employees, customers, partners, and your clients in protecting the organizational assets. Now, in another video, I'm going to see how to help you understand how to create information security policy documents, because that's a low hanging fruit if you want to get started in cybersecurity. If you get into a company, if you get into an organization, one of the first questions you want to ask is if they have an information security policy document, right? So if they have an information security policy document, what you want to do is to see if there are loopholes in that security policy. So if they don't have a policy document, one of the first things you want to do is to create an InfoSec policy. So there are several types of InfoSec policy. So it can be the network policy, it can be the password policy, it can be the GDPR, it can be the BYOD policy, bring your own device policy. There are several aspects, depending on how large the organization is. It can be separate documents, or it can be all in one document as the InfoSec policy. Just like organizations normally have health policy, that's HSC policy, they have work policy, they have... Uh, address policy, they have uh, they have several other type of policies. So for cyber security, we'll talk about the information security policy. So who is going to be responsible for documenting that, for writing that? So you should have excellent research skill set, right? You should be able to compose clear, accurate, coherent documentation, right? Simple, stepwise, continuous improvement in the document that you have created. So that's the job of a policy writer. Now, subsequently, like I said, I'm going to create a separate video on how do you write a policy document. So if you are interested in that, don't forget to make sure, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. So I'm going to make a separate video on how to create InfoSec policy. The process is normally, uh, one, do a security audit, uh, learn from standard guidelines, um, seek uh, consent and get uh, input from HR, human resource uh, manager from uh, the SOC analyst or the SOC department, security operation center. Uh, you need to get input from legal department. You need to get input from the chief uh, security officer within organization. You need to get input from a few other persons. Then you need to now adapt the standard guidelines you've gotten to the security audit you've done, right? Then you need to now send for approval by senior management, then once that is approved, because the policy needs to be able to uh, back and also bite. So that's why you need HR, for instance, so that if somebody is going against a policy, let's say, uh, for instance, the in the document, you have to change your password every three months, or interns, for instance, does not have access to some certain kind of things, or you cannot use work email for so, so, and so, so that kind of stuff. So. All of those things you should have that in your policy document. So I will explain later on the different types of policies and how you could create them and give you some samples. So a, a policy writer, he needs or she needs excellent research skill set and you're able to take up this role. And that is a very low hanging fruit for somebody new in cybersecurity. Now, one of the non technical rules you can also be involved in is governance, risks, and compliance. So we call that GRC. So this helps organizations to have a structure, governance, risks management, and regulatory compliance. So there are several regulatory uh, frameworks, countries, industry based, or whatever. So who is going to help us and who is going to make sure that the organization is compliant to those regulations? is compliant to those 
um, standards set by either the country or if a, an organization, let's say it's in telecoms. So the country is going to have a telecoms body, maybe one or two or three uh, by legislation. Then industry, the company is going to be, need to also adhere to industry standards. So we're going to make sure that there is compliance. So that's the job of the governance risks and compliance experts. So the question is, are you a great communicator? Are you a good researcher? Do you have a knack for presentation and people management? Then this role is perfect for you. So there are several job roles. In this channel also, I'll make our time and start presenting and explaining uh, different job adverts, different job opportunities, and what kind of skill set or certifications that you need to be able to have to be able to apply for those jobs. So on the channel, I'll make our time and create a playlist for job adverts and how you can get started with them. Okay, this is GRC. So next, we're going to, sorry for that, uh, my alarm. Uh, we're going to look at a project manager. I've been a, a passionate project manager for the last uh, decade or more. So I do a lot of project management in tech. Uh, you should be conversant with the other Prince II, uh, in the UK standard or the uh, PMI, that's PMP, the US standard. So if you are into project management or business analysis, uh, CBAB or by PMI, that's certified business uh, analysis professional. So if project management is what you have left for, you know how to manage schedule, you know how to, that is time, you know how to manage people, you know how to manage resources, you know how to manage um, uh, stakeholders, you know to, how to manage risks. So if it's what you are passionate about, you're going to be responsible for planning, organizing, directing, the completion of cybersecurity projects within an organization. So you don't necessarily need to have a, a, a core skill set in cybersecurity to take up this role. Provided you're a project manager, you have, if you've taken some of the last two, three certifications I talked about on the channel, then you could take up roles in this and progress. Don't forget these roles are non-technical roles and they're like a, a kickstart for you if you are new in cybersecurity. Then we'll talk about product manager. So who is a product manager? Now, different cybersecurity organizations or firms that need cybersecurity experts, they might, need, they might have some services or products. So what's a product? A product typically would attend to a particular need. So it can be an antivirus software. It can be a crime stopper app. It can be um, a service, uh, maybe a, a software as a service. It can be a service rendered to organizations or individuals or whatever. So who is going to help us attain corporate objectives throughout the product life cycle? So a product is going to be developed. Let's say, for instance, if you are deploying a product, a cybersecurity firm is deploying a product that is responsible for helping uh, real estate firms manage the, uh, what is it called? The estates they have. Uh, the housing structures and housing, uh, uh, the buildings they have typically. So maybe the app is about how do we stop crime? How do we report crime? How do we do whatever? So the job of the project or the product manager is to ensure that that product, that service can meet customers' needs. It can increase revenue. Right. So as a cybersecurity product manager, you work closely with engineering, right? Who is going to, the, the team that's responsible for creating that software, doing sales, doing marketing, supporting that particular product for that particular real estate firm or a, a customer or the, a, a, a B2B a kind of um, interaction. So that person is going to be responsible and make sure that it meets customers' needs. So what are the kind of soft skills you need for this role? A cybersecurity product manager. So, so you need good an, uh, analysis skills. You need to know teamwork, to know how to manage work with people, people management skills. So if 
you are good in project management or you're good in uh, UI UX product management. So, and you're interested in transitioning into cybersecurity, then this is for you because you're going to be involved in creating product services uh, that meet the cybersecurity needs of individuals or organizations. Then the next role is a data protection officer. So this is not necessarily a core uh, or a technical role in cybersecurity. So a lot of organizations need data protection officers. So he or she is going to be responsible for making, negotiating, and reviewing commercial agreements that has protected, protected information in it, right? So this is very, very aligned to the general data protection regulation. The GDPR regulation is an EU policy by, I think it was done sometime in 20, 2018 or so. 2017 then got, um, uh, got approved in 2018. So a lot of countries have adapted this general data protection regulation. So they need people to be able to have good knowledge in privacy laws, right? If you are a legal practitioner, for instance, and you want to transition into cybersecurity, this is a good bet for you because this is, you're trying to look at the law because data protection officers uh, look at how do we make sure that if we are partnering with, let's say a vendor, a customer, an agent, a Anybody that needs to interact with our either public facing or internal servers or documents or whatever, how do we make sure that we comply to uh, the law? How do we make sure that data is being protected? So the general data protection regulation talks about data at rest, data at transit, data being processed. Data at rest, for instance, the data you have in your hard disk stored or in a server stored, uh, data in transit when you communicate, when you are browsing or making transaction over an e-commerce website or whatever, that's data in transit. Or data being processed if somebody is going to be processing or working on documents and all of the different stages where you have data set. So that's the job of a data protection officer to make sure that who is going to be the data, who is going to be responsible for creating the data, storing the data, transmitting the data, processing the data, make sure that data is being protected. So that's the job of a data protection officer. Then I have technical content creators, right? So this is very um, a very nice role for most of us that are interested in technical writing, documentation, uh, this is for you. Now, so if you're creative uh, and you seek a career in cyber security, then this is, a role you could get started with. You've taken any of the certifications that I have talked about in my previous videos. You've taken uh, a training in cybersecurity. You have ability to research, you have ability to write. Then why not write for blogs, for websites, for organizations? Why not start up a blog, right? And see how you can monetize it. So how can you create content? So content creator is the umbrella word that comprises bloggers, writers, actors, graphic designers, and even copywriters. Anybody that can create a copy, that can create content, they fall into this definition. Now, educating visitors is one best way to convert potential leads in marketing. Yes, uh, in marketing, I'm a very good fan of marketing. We'll talk about the AIDA model, the awareness, interest, decision, and action. So for instance, for organizations, if they have a product or they have a service, one way they, and it's a cybersecurity product or service, one way they can get to customers is by creating content, is by dishing out the advantages, the benefits, the, uh, all of the different um, ways uh, people can either use that product or, or, or partner to use that particular service or whatever. So, who is going to be responsible for creating a lot of content? If you go to uh, antivirus uh, companies, uh, uh, cybersecurity products, services, same, um, uh, crime stoppers, you uh, go to several uh, uh, 
corporate organizations that have security products, a lot of them might not be converting clients because they don't have a lot of content around what they are servicing or the kind of product they are rendering or they are delivering to clients. So who can get out and create a lot of technical content for these products or services, then that person can have a role as a technical content creator. So as a technical content creator, you work with subject matter experts, SMEs, to create interesting and educating content that drives sales and marketing. So you'll be in charge of managing content management systems. So the organization can have a website, so you can be uh, in charge of creating content around the product and around the services of that organization. Customer success manager. Microsoft is known to have a, a lot of rules in customer success. Even Amazon have a lot of rules in customer success. Because if an organization have a product or a service and people can't use it, or people can't people pay money but cannot appreciate the product, then it's it's the, the, the product might have a very steep and very soon ending life cycle. So brands that have satisfied customers have the finest advocates and promoters of their products and services. So that's the responsibility of a customer success manager. So you, you see a lot of job vacancy, a lot of roles. Uh, that has to do with customer service matter. And this does not just apply to cyber security, it applies to other areas of tech. So it can be in every other area, not just in cyber security. So it's a role that is, uh, that is out there. Then the ninth one is sales engineer. So who is a sales engineer? So a sales engineer is someone that is experienced in sales, experienced in driving sales so if you are bold you're confident you can sell anything to anyone then the sales engineer role is rest is uh is for you just look at yourself as somebody selling cyber security products or services right so the sales engineer is in charge of technology evolution making presenting proposals to customers so your job is not to actually fix anything your job is not to actually do technical stuff your job is just to sell right how can you sell so selling and marketing very closely related. So, but selling is that transactional aspect while marketing is actually creating relationships so that you can convert that to sales. So if you have skill set currently in sales and marketing, then you could help organizations sell their cybersecurity products. Then technical writer, right? So this is closely related to number um, uh, seven, right? So this has changed over the years. So as a technical writer, you will be involved in doing some graphic designs, content writing, write, taking out documents and the rest. So if you're a writer, you want to get into cybersecurity, then this is for you. So I got this from Hack Tales and some content from the South Tech Ventures. Thank you very much for listening to the presentation. So if you have questions, don't forget to comment in the comment section. And if you are undergoing a mentorship, you are taking a training uh, with me, you are undergoing a mentorship either in Telegram or in WhatsApp, or you're running any of our physical trainings, please don't forget to drop a comment in the training and mentorship room, and I'll be happy to give you a response. Thank you very much.